preterm prelabor rupture of membranes. Background. Preterm prelabor rupture of membranes or PPROM complicates only 2% of pregnancies but is associated with 40% of preterm deliveries and can result in significant neonatal morbidity and mortality. The three causes of neonatal death associated with PPROM are prematurity, sepsis, and pulmonary hypoplasia. Women with intrauterine infection deliver earlier than non-infected women and infants born with sepsis have a mortality four times higher than those without sepsis. How is the diagnosis of preterm prelabor rupture of membranes best achieved? The diagnosis of a spontaneous rupture of membranes is best achieved by maternal history followed by a sterile speculum examination. The diagnosis is made by a history suggestive of a spontaneous rupture of membranes followed by a sterile speculum examination demonstrating a pooling of fluid in the posterior vaginal fornix. A nitrazine test is not necessary. Digital vaginal examination is best avoided unless there is a strong suspicion that the woman may be in labor. This is because microorganisms may be transported from the vagina into the cervix, leading to intrauterine infection, prostaglandin release, and preterm labor. Ultrasound examination is useful in some cases to help confirm the diagnosis. What antenatal tests should be performed? Women should be observed for signs of clinical chorioamnionitis. The criteria for the diagnosis of clinical chorioamnionitis include maternal pyrexia, tachycardia, leukocytosis, uterine tenderness, offensive vaginal discharge, and fetal tachycardia. During observation, the woman should be regularly examined for such signs of intrauterine infection and an abnormal parameter or a combination of them may indicate intrauterine infection. The frequency of maternal temperature, pulse, and fetal heart rate auscultation should be between every 4 and 8 hours. Weekly high vaginal swab need not be performed. It is not necessary to carry out weekly maternal full blood count or C-reactive protein because the sensitivity of these tests in the detection of intrauterine infection is low. Cardiotochography is useful and indeed fetal tachycardia is used in a definition of clinical chorioamnionitis. Biophysical profile score and Doppler velocimetry can be carried out, but women should be informed that these tests are of limited value in predicting fetal infection. What is the role of amniocentesis? Although there are data documenting an association between subclinical intrauterine infection and adverse neonatal outcome, the role of amniocentesis in improving outcome remains to be determined. There is insufficient evidence to recommend the use of amniocentesis in the diagnosis of intrauterine infection. Management Treatment Are prophylactic antibiotics recommended? Erythromycin should be given for 10 days following the diagnosis of PPROM or preterm prelabor rupture of membranes. What is the role of antenatal corticosteroids? Antenatal corticosteroids should be administered in women with preterm prelabor rupture of membranes. Should tocolytic agents be used? Tocolysis in women with preterm prelabor rupture of membranes is not recommended because this treatment does not significantly improve perinatal outcome. When is the appropriate time to deliver the baby? Delivery should be considered at 34 weeks of gestation. Where expectant management is considered beyond this gestation, women should be informed of the increased risk of chorioamnionitis and the decreased risk of respiratory problems in the neonate. Can women be monitored at home? There are insufficient data to make recommendations for home and outpatient monitoring rather than continued hospital admission 
in women with preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes. It would be considered reasonable to keep the woman in hospital for at least 48 hours before a decision is made to allow her to go home. This method of management should be individualized and restricted to certain women. Women should be instructed to take regular temperature readings at home every 4 to 8 hours. Should amnioinfusion in labor be carried out? Amnioinfusion during labor is not recommended in women with preterm rupture of membranes. What is the role of transabdominal amnioinfusion in the prevention of pulmonary hypoplasia? There is insufficient evidence to recommend amnioinfusion in very preterm PPROM as a method to prevent pulmonary hypoplasia. What is the role of fibrin glue in the sealing of chorioamniotic membranes to prevent pulmonary hypoplasia? There is insufficient evidence to recommend fibrin sealants as routine treatment for second trimester oligohydramnios caused by preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes.